Yo, what's up? Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm JS Carr and today I'm going to show you how my newest song In Search of the Miraculous was made. I love recording this kind of videos because I feel like it's a great way for me to connect with you guys on a deeper level. Making YouTube videos for me just feels like I'm talking to you guys directly as if you're all around me just watching me. I wish I could make this a masterclass. If you're watching this video, just know that you can download the FOP. Yes, the actual FOP. So you can follow every single thing I did at home. And of course, if you download this, you will get everything all the things that I used with my mixing. So you can just replace my stuff and everything. I really hope you guys can check it out. It's going to be at store.jscare.com. You can check it out. You can go really deep into whatever I made. I just think this is really exciting and I can wait to see what you guys learn from this project. Just know that, yes, this is an educational project, but you can always change melodies and everything. You can always use these drums on your stuff. You can always use the basses as long as you make a new melody with them, of course. But I mean, it's there for you guys to use, right? So check it out at store.jscare.com. So anyways, enough promotion. How did I come up with this track? The track is called In Search of the Miraculous. And the reason why it's called In Search of the Miraculous, there's a specific book I once read called In Search of the Miraculous by Uspensky. And I swear, if you ever have the chance of reading this book, do it. If you're into esoteric slash occult slash uh, spiritual topics or even religious topics, you should definitely check out this book. Um, I've always been spiritual ever since I was born, I think. I've always felt a very deep connection with something else. I don't think we're here just for the sake of existing and making money and banal things. I think we're here for something deeper, to be honest. And this track, yes, it was based on a book, but it is also very, very, very deeply based on my own search. If I ever think about what I've experienced during this search for the miraculous, this is it. This track could be the perfect example of whatever I've experienced. I think it really feels like it. Whenever I listen to it, it just feels like me, like a part of me, like an experience. It's hard to explain. Normally, whenever you listen to music for a long time, I'm guessing you can create memories with it. But with this track, as I was making it, I already had memories from my own life on it before it was done. And it sort of feels like everything I've went through, all of my spiritual lessons that I've had. It's really cool. It is not a new song at all. I made it about a year ago and, and I made it just before ADE. And all throughout ADE 2023, I couldn't stop listening to it. I was just listening to it on and on and on. And, and even to date, which is has been said more than a year ago, I still listen to it and I'm, I'm still finding it surprising and full of something that goes beyond simple music, I guess, if that's what it is that I'm feeling. Anyways, that's uh, my experience with this track. Anytime I listen to it, it makes me happy. And I'm hoping besides all of the other things that I'm talking about, I'm hoping this song makes you happy because it makes me really happy. It makes me feel safe and at home. So that's it for this track. That's basically the story. It was originally a sample and it sounds like this. I think it sounds fantastic. It sort of sounds like a grainy uh, vocal. And what I did to it, to take it from that point to this. Was first of all, a Avi Road saturator. So I could add some of the high frequencies there. So if without it, it sounds like this. With it. It's a very subtle thing that adds a lot of zizzle. Let me actually disable everything so you can hear the difference without it and then with it. Without it, with it, it really gives some to the vocals without having to add any extra layer of white noise or anything. And then I'm using transit and with transit, I'm adding some reverb, some spread and some OTT, but I think I'm only using this for some parts of the song. If not, it is always on. Let's see. It is always on. It's a preset called Exciter, and that's pretty much what it's doing. Besides that, I'm also using Super VHS, and the only reason why I'm using this is for this drift knob, which is doing some sort of pitch change to the vocal. I'm also getting rid of some of the lows, and I'm getting rid of this frequency here, which I found annoying. I'm using a vocal writer to make sure that some of those notes stay, or like some of those vocal shops stay at the same volume throughout the whole loop, because I felt like it was changing too much before. Some of these things I went in and I changed the volume just using this gain knob over here. Afterwards, I added an Arvox, which is also doing some sort of compression. I then opened up a uh, crow speed and I was trying to use this as a stutter kind of thing. You can hear it right now. Let me show you. <laughs> 
if you listen to the song, this song is also inspired by Fred again, some of uh, the latest Shredix music. And I felt like I wanted to add some sort of trance gate or something, but it just sounded cheesy, to be honest. So I didn't use any. Yeah, so I disabled Gross Beat. It's not on ever. And I'm using Arcs for an inflator and I'm using this to clip everything, basically. I'm also using a soft clipper to clip it again. Don't ask me why. And then I'm using a kickstart with the first preset on. That's it. And with it, sounds like this. After adding all these effects, I sent out the vocal to a synth group or sub channel. And I used this transit to create some transitions throughout the song. And I'm getting rid of all of the lows because uh, it was a synth group. So, so I made this melody. Um, all shops sounds like this. <laughs> And that loops over and over and over again. I think the first part is a question. And then I feel like this part is the answer to that. And I feel like this part is a sort of unison kind of thing where both characters that are having conversation then agree. Throughout the whole song, I play around with automations a lot. A lot of you always ask me, how, why are there so many automations? The reason why I'm making automations is so I can make the song progress. So it's not always playing the same thing over and over again. And also so I can transition easier from one part of the song to the other. So it's not just progressing, but also taking it back one step or two, you know, for the vocals, as you can see, I'm also using an automation here where it's, it's helping me trans transition this synth in the job. But, and that's it for the, for the vocals, really, to be honest. Afterwards, I added some drums, which uh, started off with some kick. After this, what I added was a kick, which sounds like this. Let me mute this vocal. Uh, kick sounds like this. Very 90s kind of kick. It sounds almost analog. And I have a layer on it with a top sort of kick. Sounds a little bit distorted. Without it. With it. If we put this at like 150 BPM, it would sound like this. Something that I find really cool about this track is that I'm not using the usual BPM that I work at. Like I normally work at 128 and this track is 135. Why is it 135? I don't know. I just felt like it was the right BPM for what I was feeling or like for the emotions that I went, that I was trying to portray, you know, so a little bit more upbeat than normal. So it's the kick. Then we got a 909 uh, house I had. And then I got some extra hi-hats, sort of like shakers. When you play all of these three, and then I have a loop from Vorwerk, which I uh, sh cut some of the parts. You add another hi-hat. But I felt like that was not enough. So I added a perk. And then I added another perk. And then I was like, that's not enough. We need some claps. So I added one, two, and three claps. And it sounds like this. This claps, um, I decided to make really short claps slash snares. Here's one. Here's a second one. And here's the third one. And when you play this drums with a, with a vocal, it's like... So the bass line comes in, sounds like this, and looks like this. Let me show you. So the bass on the drop sounds like this. I 
think it sounds really, really cool. I think it sounds amazing. And one of the things that I'm doing to this lead, I mean, this space is I'm using, I'm moving this macro over and over again, which is the open macro, which is controlling how much low pass there is. So you can see it and hear it here. Watch this. Look how it moves. I'm making it go up every two bars uh, rhythmically, like sort of out of beat. Sounds like this. And I'm making it open a little bit more than normal on the last part of the melody where it goes one octave higher. Because that's one thing with this. It's going up, down, up, down. I mean, it's going, yeah, down, up, down, up, which I think gives a very emotional vibe uh, to the to the song overall. So yeah, when you play this uh, with the bass, which just to show you, uh, the bass has a transit effect, which is giving, uh, it's helping us transition. Yeah. The bass is also the sub. I'm using the same preset for everything. And actually the preset before I go into it. Um, This bass is also the sub that I'm using throughout the whole track. This uh, this bass you can actually find on my Melodic House Essential spec as Bass Bummer. It's a very cool bass. Check it out at store.jsker.com if you haven't. And also, if you want to download this FLP, remember the bass is going to be there. So uh, if you just want to get the FLP and, and learn from it, you can. You can. If you don't want to get the FLP and just want to get the sound, it's on Melodic House Essentials. Bummer. Uh, on this pack, you'll also find many sounds like, uh, like the bass I used for Echoes of Me, Neurosurgeon. You can see it here. Um, it has many really cool sounds. Even though it's called Melodic House Essentials, I've been using it for, uh, you'll see in the future, okay? But this pack, it has been my secret power lately. Um, besides that, uh, so yes, this bass is also my sub bass and I'm using a, I mean, it's, it already has a sub in here. I felt like it was powerful enough for it to be used as a sub and as a bass. And as a bass, I'm using Transit to make every transition smoother and uh, a little bit more natural. And I'm using Camel Crusher, which you can't see. But remember, my trick is you open Camel Crusher and then you find British Clean on your presets and it will still change even though I can't see it. That's what I do. Then I'm adding some EQ, which is not, you cannot see it, but for transitions, I get rid of the lows and then I get rid of the highs uh, for some transitions. Let me show you this bass transition here. For example, how it goes up. You can see transit here. Really, really, really cool effect. It has a lot of delay, but it works really well. Now, when you put everything together, I mean, when you add sidechain to, which remember, it's just the first preset on Kickstart. When you play everything together, I think it sounds really, really cool. It goes very well with this kick that I that I that I have. It sounds uh, almost techno. It sounds like this. <laughs> There are two things you can do to your basses to make them sound more interesting. One, glides. In this case, I'm making this bass go up and then down really shortly. Inside Serum, I'm making sure that the voicing of this bass is mono, legato, and I have some portamento to it. That way I can make sure that if I add a second note, it will glide to the note. With glide, without it. It's boring. Second, open up those filters. Create an automation of the cutoff on a low pass filter for your whatever synth you have. In this case, I have this bass and make it go up and close it up and close it whenever you feel right. If I disable the automation, it sounds like this. Watch. If I enable it, it sounds like this. It makes it sort of talk, giving it more life. So try those two techniques next time you're working on a track. Trust me. So that's what I did for that bass, basically. Um, once we had that bass, we had this coin. So what's next? On this track, something else that I'm using is this uh, sort of ARP. And what this is, is actually the first vocal sample, this vocal sample. I put it into granulator and I just looped it. I just looped it over and over again with a lot of reverb, a lot of delay. I play around with different effects, which ended up creating a very cool ambience. If you play these two together, it sounds like this. <laughs> Without it. With it. 
it's a really cool ambience that's giving space to the track i mean to the vocal or to the whole drop honestly it's giving harmonies and it's also giving rhythm because you can hear that dun 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 dun, dun kind of thing in the back if you play both of them <laughs> And then I just added some sidechain, some super BHS to make it glide again, changing that pitch over and over again. And then some EQ to get rid of the highs and get rid of the lows. Without it, it sounds like this. So with it, with this, I'm making sure that it sounds a little bit more control and that it also gets pushed to the back a little bit more. If you ever want to push any sound to the back, get rid of the highs and, and rid of the lows. And it will just make it sound like it's hidden somewhere, which can be quite helpful, to be honest. So after that, I wanted to add something a little bit more melodic because I feel like the, I don't know why, but I felt like the vocal needed some help. So I added a synth that was playing the exact same melody as the vocal shop. And it sounds like this, it sounds like this. And as you can see, this lead is actually part of my packs. It's called Lead Life is Amazing. And it's part of my Melodic House Essentials pack. I use this lead, as you can see here, available at store.jsker.com. And what I did to it was the exact same thing I've been doing to the other tracks. Add some drift, get rid of the lows, rid of the highs, and then a kickstart. I did feel like it had a little bit too much uh, low mid frequency. So I had to take them down. As you can see it here. When you play this for the vocal, you can really hear it. Um, it's more of a hidden layer, but it's adding some mid frequencies to the vocal, which I felt like I needed. So it sounds like this. You can sort of hear it, but it sounds very glued with the vocal, which was what I wanted, honestly. And afterwards, and I think to finish off the drop and pretty much the whole song, almost the whole song, I added this arp slash chords, actually not an arp, it's chords. Um, and they sound like this. I think they really fill out the spectrum throughout the whole drop and actually glue the melody uh, together. They sound like this. And that's the thing. Over and over again. It's a layer of two sounds. Second. It's such a happy vibe to this, bro. There's such a happy vibe to this. And what am I using? Uh, sounds wise, I'm using a pad that I made for Melodic House Essentials, Melancholy or Melancholic. It should have been Melancholic, but I called it Melan Melancholy and it sort of feels like when you're sad, nostalgic, it's sort of the same thing. And I'm using this other pad called Margarito. If you're Mexican, you know what Margarito or who Margarito was. It's really funny, to be honest. It's a great Easter egg. Yeah, Pad Margarito. I used it. And it's also part of my Melodic House Essentials. Bro, this video, this whole video feels like an ad. I know, but I'm just telling you guys, it is what I use. I use my own sounds. Anyways, uh, this pad sounds more of a, I guess, uh, analog pad. And then this other one sounds more like a vocal. When you play them like a pad. And then this one, really, really cool sounds. Both of them are getting linked. Uh, I mean, both of them have a super VHS, which is giving it drift again. And uh, for the other sound, it's pretty much the same thing. Like just super VHS. It has some gross beat. And I tried adding some transcate to this, but of course it didn't work. Like I didn't want to add a transcate. And I added an EQ, which where... Uh, which helped me get rid of the lows and the highs. Uh, now that we're seeing this, I don't think anything has a lot of high frequencies besides the drums and the vocal. Those are the only things that have high frequencies, like or like really loud high frequencies. I also used uh, this little knob over here, which helps you separate your sounds or open them a little bit more. And I used it uh, on this one, like 30%, and then to the other on the other one, 25%, making sure that they're not always mono, like they're wider, a little bit wider. The amount of separation that you add to your sounds, it's up to you to be honest but i never go past like 50 percent separation here uh sometimes like this is my maximum to be honest because sometimes things feel can feel too wide and um, yeah that's pretty much what i did so when you play these two 
it really adds something to the drop. Let me show you how the drop sounds with the bass. Uh, let me show you how it sounds like with the drums. Everything except the lead that is following the vocal and the vocal. Let me play you the drop. So without the chords slash pads, it sounds like this. I don't know, I think it sounds really cool. And it's. I think this is a great example to know that you don't always have to have the same melody on every single pattern. If you want to add some different emotions and more depth to your music, don't use the same melody for everything. Because I could easily go into this bass line, copy the bass line melody, and then just use it on the chords, and then just write chords on top of it. But I'm not doing that. Try not using the same melody on everything. It's boring, to be honest. And it sounds noob most of the times. Try stuff out. Don't feel scared of exploring different melodies within this scale. Of course, or break the scales. Fuck it, break the rules. But <laughs> so yeah, besides that, I'm using some uh, snares for the transitions, which sound like this, of course, and it has a volume automation. Sounds like this. That's it. And guess what? It doesn't have any lows. It doesn't have any lows. That's right. Something important to know is that this is an FL Studio like default sound. <laughs> And it's, I think it just sounds really cool. So, I mean, I used it. You don't always have to use the most expensive sounds out there or like the sounds everyone else is using in a way. Like if you found, if you find a default sound on your computer, on your DAW, that sounds good, use it. Yeah. I remember limiting myself when I first started making music that I had to do, that I had to use a specific kick that everyone else was using. Like you can use anything you find interesting. You can use anything you find cool. Like, uh, also nobody's going to look at your projects unless you upload a video, you know? Anyways, um, besides that, I'm using some risers in the back some effects, some white noise, a virus slow sweep, some impacts. And I'm also using some clash, I mean crashes. And of course, those crashes have some delay to it. They're here, you can see it here, and I actually have it linked to my delay in my reverb channels where I'm using Pluralis with a dotted 1.8 and a straight 1 8th. It's two channels on that. And then I have some reverb on this with the dry down because it's a scent channel. As you guys can see around me, I sold my acoustic treatment and I'm struggling to speak because I can hear myself on the reverb and it's so annoying. I think I've been uh, screaming now and it hurts my throat. It's horrible, bro. I sold it because I'm moving out. Just so you guys know, I'm moving out of this place uh, in less than a month, actually in like two weeks. So I'm trying to make it work. Anyways, um, besides this, uh, the only changes that I did was on some parts of the song, I'm playing that pad slash chord uh, with just one note. Sounds like this. And I'm making that drift change on pitch. That sounds like with Super VHS. If I exaggerate it, which I don't want. I'm just going to keep it at where it was. It just makes it sound a little bit more organic. Like I've said, like a vinyl playing and I'm using a different one here. Just repeating over and over again. And oh, I actually used a different bass here. Sounds like this. Which almost sounds like indie uh, bass, like an indie bass. I don't know, whatever, but... I know, I know, I'm gonna say it again. This bass is part of my Melodic House Essentials pack and it's called Talking Shorts. A really cool sound, to be honest. It just gives a, a fresh, it sort of feels like a like a break from the really sustained bass to a one fourth or a one sixteenth note, like dun 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 dun. Listen to this. We're playing the exact same sounds. I mean, the exact same melodies here. And here. But this part feels like a break because the bass is not as powerful. That's first. And second, I added some sustain on this uh, pads. Like I, I kept them playing on the same notes over and over again, creating some tension, which is different than the drop. The drop is giving you answers and questions and moving around with um, over and over again. So this is something uh, you could try on your next creation. Try to add a, a 
part where you change the basses completely to something similar, but maybe a different rhythm, maybe uh, some different EQ on it, just so it feels like, okay, I'm taking a break from the drop. But I mean, this only lasts for like eight bars, I guess. I don't know how many bars, I don't know how to count, but eight bars, I think. And then it starts again. Everything starts again. I think is a really cool thing. Now, if you've heard this song already, actually, if you haven't, go check it out. Link's going to be in the description. Go check it out if you haven't. I self-released it, okay? So I need any support on it as possible. So if you've heard it, you'll know that this track has a melody, which sounds like this. This is how the piano roll looks like. And guess what? It is a layer of two sounds. First sound, yes, it's from my pack. It's called Fake Muted Guitar. It's a synth and it, uh, yeah, it's, it's Fake Muted Guitar. And I'm having a second layer, which is a pluck called One Hour Phone Calls from my pack, from my Melodic House Essentials pack, which you can find at store.jsker.com. Again, if you want to support this channel, go check it out. And yeah, it's, it's, a pl it's two plucks, basically. If you play the first one, it sounds like this. This synth is the magic of this uh, synth, basically. But I'm adding a second lead because I wanted to add some attack and some extra flavor to it. Sounds like this. When you play all both together. And if you're wondering, what did I do to these leads? I'm just getting really lows on both of them, really. I think for the first lead, I also added some shaper box to add some fuss crush uh, noise. If I remove it, it sounds like this. With. I know, I know it sounds really cool. And here's the thing, I'm not adding any frequencies above 9.5K, okay? If I did, it would sound really sharp like this. Which, which I did not want. I only wanted 9.5K, like this. This helps it keep this uh, sort of vintage sound to it where you don't have anything that is extremely harsh or like extremely piercing, bright. You know, what I did to this basically was find bus crush, 100% mix, and then automate, I mean, automatic release. Although I removed all of the hold on it, but automatic release, that's going to help you make sure that any, any noise uh, that you choose will find or like will play exactly when you play those leads. Okay. Something else to know is that this, both, both leads are linked to the delay and reverb sent channels. If I remove them, sounds like this. It sounds like some of them already had a delay, one of the sounds, um, and I think they did. So both of them already have delay and reverb inside the plugin. And I didn't remove it because I wanted it. I wanted this sounds to have so much ambience and so much movement. And that's what you acquire. That's what you can do with reverb and, and, and delay. You know, with reverb, you create space and with delay, you create movement, but also sort of space. It depends on what kind of uh, delay you use. In this case, I'm using left to right. So it's moving as ping pong delay. And for for the reverb, I'm using just fruity reverb again. But when you play them together, having two separate channels for reverb and delay will help you maintain everything really, really, really clean. For the reverb uh, send channel, I'm using an EQ. I'm getting really the lows and the highs. And then I put the reverb. So I make sure that any any signal going into the reverb goes in super clean. And also for the delay, if you open the delay, you'll see that, guess what? You don't have any highs and you don't have any any lows. I mean, I, I do have some highs, but they're rolled down, okay? That's a great technique that I like using is EQing before I add any any plugin. So what else? What, what's about this lead? And that sounds so good. So this lead, as you can see, this melody uh, progresses a lot. And I think that's what the magic is about this uh, lead. It goes up up and up and up and up and up for the lead. If you listen to it.
I think this melody really adds a, a sort of trance vibe to the track, which I really, 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 really like. I live up for it. It sounds fantastic, I think. <laughs> It, it's, it's, I think it's crazy. I think it's a crazy result. I love this. Uh, I love how it's sounding, to be honest. And to finish off the track, this is a very long video, bro. Like once again, I've spent like four hours recording this video. I shoot enough because then I have to edit it for like 20 hours. Ugh. Okay. Then I actually changed the melody and it sounds like this. <laughs> And if you're asking me, what the hell happened here, Jay? What happened was I took everything down from E. I took it down to B. So it's now a B melody instead of a, a E as we had it before. And everything is transposed six semitones below, giving it a complete different vibe. I really love this part because if I ever, if I ever get bored of everything that's happening in the beginning of the song with this part, it's like, oh, you're bored? Let me just change it completely. I love this. I love this, to be honest. And then the track ends like that. It goes back to the same melody. It goes back to the original tuning of the song and then the song ends. And that's it for the song. It is that, that simple. Is it simple? I don't know because I've recorded this for like four hours now. My head, my head hurts now and my throat hurts now. Uh, but now what, for the master, I'm using God Particle. I didn't move a single thing besides the limiter. I kept it at 0 0.4 decibels of boost. And I'm adding Pro Pro Q to get rid of the lows, get rid of the highs. I mean, some of the highs on the drop. Um, then I'm boosting some of the highs. I mean, but only the sides of it. So making it wider above 5,000 Hertz, but only on the sides. And I'm using a really cool technique I learned from Luca Bertolesi, which helps you boost those mid frequencies anytime the kick or the bass hit. Uh, by that, I'm using a sidechain in, inside Pro MB and I'm linking this specific frequencies. Anytime something goes up on this frequencies, everything goes up on this uh, range that I chose. And it goes up to three decibels because it's mastering. You don't want to do more than six decibels max, I guess. Um, and it sounds really cool. And it makes with this technique, I make sure that the bass and the kick will never um, drown the vocals and all of the mid frequencies there happening, happening in the, in the mix, you know. <laughs> And then I'm using a ozone imager and I'm making everything below 120 hertz mono or actually 200 hertz mono. And then for band two, which uh, is from 200 to like 1.1K, I'm making it wider and then I'm making it wide again, but a little bit less. And then I'm making it way louder. I mean, way, way uh, wider when you go all the way up to 46 uh 13k hertz if you look at this it's actually clipping but it, it just works for me you know if i remove the imager you'll notice a lot of difference let me show you i'm gonna bypass it And to finish off, I'm using Sausage Fatner at 1%, which I don't think I need because I'm using God Particle, but that's it for this track, really. I'm also doing the, the Fruity Balance automation before the drop, so the drop can go lower in volume before it hits, and when it hits, it goes up. And I'm also automating this stereo separation uh, knob here, which makes it go mono before the drop. And that's it. And that's it. Really, that's it for this, for this song. Wow, I spent so much time recording this. It's crazy. <laughs>
I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. A lot of fun making it, to be honest. I really love this song. If you want to buy the FLP, remember it's going to be at store.jsk.com. You'll find the exact same FLP I just showed you. No changes. So you can download and learn from it. I know this video will help a lot so you guys can learn at home. But if you can get your hands on it, you'll be able to try anything out. Change melodies. Try different synths. Uh, and also, you'll be able to use any of these elements in your productions. Of course, this is for educational purposes only. So try not releasing this song as your own. If you can, please, I would really appreciate that. But if you change the melodies, you change the vocals, you can use the same drums, you can use the same structure. Who cares, bro? You bought it. All right. Um, anyways, I hope you guys can really check that out. I think it's a really cool opportunity. And uh, if there's anything I missed on this video, please let me know. I can always answer your questions in the comments. I know I haven't answered most comments on Facebook, on YouTube lately, but I will, I will take my time to answer. Okay. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of this song. I really like it. I can stop listening to it even after one year of making it. I'm hoping you guys are feeling the exact same thing with this song. So yes, go check out In Search of the Miraculous on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, wherever you want to listen to it. Um, the link's going to be in the description as well as, I mean, as well as the FLP in description if you can check it out, okay? This is Jay Escar and this was another video explaining how I made one of my songs. It was good having you guys here. I love you, okay? Take care and we'll see each other soon, okay? Maybe for a q and I don't know. We should make a Q&A. We definitely should. Just let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you guys soon, okay? Take care.